a particular detective who did horrible things. But that detective also worked with prosecutors who did horrible things. And a prosecutor has now been disbarred because of these horrible things. I'm going to take you back to some reporting we did on day one about this detective. Here it is. We've been reporting on this SOB detective for months. Let's put his picture up. Now he's indicted. We're talking about Roger Golubsky. This is evil personified. For decades, this man utilized his authority as a police officer, a detective, a supervisor. To do what? To brutalize black women, to sexually prey on black women, to even indicate that he was going to prey on a black woman's daughter and gave young black men cases in jail when their mother would not have a sexual relation with him. Dirty as hell. Roger Golubsky was arrested at his home, finally in Edwardsville after federal grand jury indicted him on six counts of civil rights violations. He was expected to make his first court appearance Thursday afternoon. So he's a retired uh, cop now, Golubsky retired in 2010 after working for the Kansas City Police Department for how many years? 35, 35 years and they knew he was corrupt, they did nothing. The FBI has been investigating allegations that Golubsky who was white, sexually assaulted black women in the city and exchanged drugs for information during criminal investigation, something he did routinely. The federal indictment announced Thursday accuses Golubsky of sexually assaulting two women on several occasions between 1998 and 2002. The indictment does not state the race of the women. He is accused of raping both women and forcing them to perform oral sex on him several times in his vehicle and at the woman's home. Golubsky's conduct included aggravated assault, abuse, and kidnapping, according to the indictment. If convicted of any of the counts, Golubsky could be sentenced to life in prison. With millions watching and many people benefiting from this program called Indisputable, we just need 1% of the viewers to become a paid member so we can continue to bring this content to you. Now back to the show. Put up the picture of his, I would call, partner in crime. Now, in order for him to get away with these malicious and false prosecutions, he has to work with somebody. In an update, in Kansas, Tara Moorhead, who retired as a federal prosecutor last August, has agreed to turn over her law license as a county prosecutor. In the 1990s, Moorhead helped. KCKPD detective Roger Golubsky framed an innocent man who spent 23 years in prison. She has been able to operate as a prosecutor ever since. Moorhead, who became notorious for skirting legal protections for defendants, agreed to surrender her license as part of an agreement with the Kansas Board of Discipline of Attorneys. She is awaiting disbarment from the Kansas Supreme Court, according to the filings. The documents also show that Moorhead, who retired from the US Attorney's Office in Kansas last August, was the subject of a federal investigation by the US Department of Justice. The result of that probe is currently unknown. Moorhead's conduct came under scrutiny during the exoneration of Lamont McIntyre, who was convicted in 1994 of a double homicide when he was 17 years of age. McIntyre was freed in 2017 after the county district attorney Mark Dupree said his conviction was a manifest injustice. And a judge decided to drop the entire case. McIntyre sued and was awarded 12.5 million in 2022 by the Unified Government of Kansas City and the county for wrongful conviction. Now. If you recall, when we first covered the story of Golubsky, I said on this program, in order for Golubsky to do what he has been able to do for decades, he has been working with other police officers, others who are executives in law enforcement, and yes, absolutely prosecutors who decided to continue to prosecute cases brought to them by this corrupt individual. And I said then, 
someone or maybe more than someone who prosecuted these cases must be held criminally accountable. Right now we have a disbarment. It took long enough, should have happened a long time ago. Acting on a case built by disgraced former Kansas City, Kansas Police Detective Roger Golubsky. Moorhead, the prosecutor, presented no physical evidence tying McIntyre to the murders. She relied upon the testimony of a witness, Nico Quinn, who later recanted. Quinn said Moorhead threatened to throw her in jail and take her children if she did not lie about what she saw the day of the double homicide. That is criminal conduct. Moorhead also failed to describe that she had a past romantic relationship with the judge on the case. Once again, corrupt behavior. After her tenure in the county DA's office, Moorhead moved to the US Attorney's Office in Kansas, where she became embroiled in another alleged ethical breach or breaches and was removed from criminal cases in 2021. Continuing to fail up, Moorhead was criticized in the US Department of Justice investigation after a federal judge in 2017 tossed the defendant's conviction on drug charges. On March, the March 20 filing with the Kansas Supreme Court signed by Alice Walker, Deputy Disciplinary Administrator of the Kansas Board of Discipline Attorneys, asked the court to forego an April pre hearing and a May formal hearing because Moorhead had agreed to surrender her license to practice law. The board recommended that the high court accept it. The court approved the request and is now expected to issue a formal disbarment, which is standard practice on the Kansas Supreme Court rules when an attorney surrenders their law license. Put it up. The attorney should have one of these two. Meanwhile, Golubsky faces a federal trial this fall on charges that he violated the civil rights of multiple black women and in separate cases protected a KCK drug dealer who was running a sex trafficking operation of underage girls. He is currently on home arrest and was recently chided by a federal magistrate for violating his arrest conditions by going to a fast food place. He should simply be in jail as well. All right, so here we are. At least the prosecutor is getting disbarred. Some people are saying that is not good enough. Because this criminal, this criminal or this criminal conspiracy requires co-conspirators. It requires it. He's one man. He's one human being. He committed carnage and violated individuals for decades under the protection of the criminal justice system in Kansas. There's an opportunity now to hold people accountable who actually decided to aid and abet. Some of them probably were point people to the operation, and he may have been auxiliary, and then vice versa, depending on the circumstance. All of them are bad apples, all of them engage in criminal conduct, in my opinion, and all of them should have criminal penalty for what they have done to black men and black women since 1990. This is just one small group of people. There are groups like this all over this country. They have not been caught, they have not been held accountable, and some of them are still in positions of absolute authority in this system. All right, yes, my thoughts here. Yeah, of course, this is not nearly enough of a consequence. She ruined at least one person's life that we know of. She she took his life from him, took any opportunity he may have had from him. He was a teenager at the time, but she was able to have a fulfilling career with a high salary, with a lot of protections as we now see. She was able to live her life outside of prison walls. She was able to work, have a family, have friends. She was able to retire. And she was able to live with herself after having done something like this, knowing what she did. I don't know how she did that. That really is a different kind of person who can intentionally or deliberately destroy somebody's life and then go to sleep for the next you know, 20 or 30 yep. years. But the collusion between the detective and the prosecutor is such a case in point. It's unapologetic evidence of the corruption within law enforcement and government that we all know exists. So I really hope we see further consequences for Moorhead because a disbarment after she's already retired really just feels like an additional injustice. Yeah, it really does. And we're not talking about, you know, lying under oath about a big nothing, right? Mm -hmm. We're talking about consequence that took the life of other people and aided and abetted a murderer, a corrupt cop whose actions likely led to the deaths of multiple people in the span of his career. 
uh, sexual assault, everything else, pinning cases on innocent people. Come on now, you have to get arraigned and indicted. All right, we'll bring you updates as they come.